So uh, I thought today to talk a little bit something that probably has never been talked before in the educational session at the either American society or European society in there. And it's actually, uh, it's, it's where viral vectors and oncolytic viruses and immunotherapy has finally met. Because for a long time, those three fields, as also we have seen so far, have been quite separated. People were doing immunotherapy, mainly like T-cell therapy or, or, or monoclonal antibody therapies. People, of course, they were doing oncolytic viruses. I mean, that was an excellent example by Andy about colo ID1, the virus that was actually made, selected, bioselected to be extremely replicative in cancer, not thinking at all about the immune system, though. And of course, then there are viral vectors or the classical gene therapy, and we have heard a lot about it. So there is a monogenic disease, and we want to transfer this gene and correct this phenotype. Now, historically, people that were involved in viral vectors, because of toxicity, they were historically the first one to face the fact that, uh, you know what, we have the immune system. And the immune system does something to the, to the viruses. In fact, viruses have evolved with us. So they have plenty of receptors to interact with our immune system. Uh, a little bit more reluctant was the field of oncolytic viruses, extremely virocentric. We need to find a virus that replicates fast and kills every cell. Do we have the immune system? Well, I don't know. We don't care. We'll see. Uh, the point is that the, about not very long time ago, say seven years ago, eight years ago, there were clinical trials where people were timing uh, chemotherapy with oncolytic viruses in order to give the virus when the, when the patient was the most immunosuppressed. Now, there was a very old conception, and I would say in the last 10 years, but even less, in the last five years, this field has completely changed and the paradigm has completely shifted. So actually, this three field, you see the oncolytic virus a little bit slower, have met. And they have actually a new, uh, probably a new field as like, you know, was born, and it's called immunobiotherapy or oncolytic vaccines. So what do we want to do with that? So we want to use viruses, and we want to take the advantage of the fact that viruses have evolved, and they've been successfully successful in the evolution because they know how to interact with our immune system. They know how to, how to trigger an immune response, but not too much to kill the host, but well enough to basically get cleared from the host. Uh, we can use these features that virus have to generate anti-tumor response. And this is basically the main topic of, 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 of my lecture. This is the goal of this lecture, understanding that there is a potential in biotherapy uh, uh, as a platform for immunotherapy. We can use viruses <coughs> to elicit uh, tumor-specific immune response. Now, how many of you know you can raise hand, what is an oncolytic virus? Everybody, great. So oncolytic viruses are viruses, I, I knew you knew it, I just did it so that we can wake up a little bit. <laughs> uh, oncolytic viruses are viruses that can find the tumor, a little bit like Andy has said before, can find the tumor, they can replicate in it, and they can kill the tumor. And once they have killed selectively cancer cells, they can move on to the next cell and kill the other cell and move on and move on. And they can continuously do that until the tumor is cleared. And that was what people were thinking, I would say, probably 10 years ago. So basically, those viruses can <coughs> infect normal cells as, well as, well as, long as well as tumor cells, but the normal cells are able to eliminate the virus. But in the two folks, sorry, but in the tumor cells, they can actually replicate and kill it. We have lived it with it for a very long time, but then at some point we realized that there is an immune system to explore. And those viruses, while they are doing this, they are also interacting with the immune system. Eventually, they are interacting with, we'll see a little bit in more detail soon, we interact with the antigen-presenting cells, they start to present viral antigens, and so on. So, keep your friends close, but keep your enemy closer. That's what we thought about 
seven years ago. Can we use the immune system instead of fighting it, and instead of giving the virus when the, the patient is immunosuppressed, but can we use the immune system so that the immune system can, in fact, cooperate synergistically with the oncolysis? When we start actually uh, uh, developing this hypothesis, uh, we had a very clear idea of what the virus does in the tumor, a very blurry idea of what the virus does with the immune system. However, this is, once again, viral vector uh, classical gene therapy people, they knew it very well. Uh, uh, and already, like, uh, in 2002 or three, I was uh, a postdoc at Baylor College of Medicine, very interested in a helper-dependent vector. And we were already facing how helper-dependent can interact with the immune system, how viruses interact with the immune system. So, but viral vector people, they knew it somehow, but oncolytic, oncolytic uh, uh, therapy field had a very blurry idea. Well, we knew that the virus can replicate in the tumor and they can kill selectively cancer cells. But then in the past, would say, five to 10 years, these pictures become much clearer. And now we know that basically it is almost silly to talk about oncolytic viruses. We should talk, in fact, about oncolytic vaccines or oncolytic immunotherapy, if you want. What happened is that it's true. The virus starts the replication in the tumor and kills selectively some cancer cells. Some, because then the virus is cleared from the host, as it should be. But what happened here is that in the tumor, there are not only cancer cells. There is a lot of other cells, including cells of the immune system, that can uh, pick up tumor antigens by the cells that in factually dying from the, uh, the oncolysis of the virus. Once these cells have picked up tumor antigens, which would, they will do it anyway, even with the regular chemotherapy, but the fact that we are using a virus and the fact that the virus is so good in triggering the innate and hence the adaptive immune response makes <coughs> the cell from a very dormant, immature, and suppressive state to an active state. And they can pick up tumor antigen, of course, and viral antigens. They can migrate. Now they're active enough to migrate to the lymph node and present these antigens to naive T cell. Those naive T cell can come back to the, to the tumor and help the oncolysis, help the virus in killing the tumor. So we have finally clarified what is the real mode of action of these viruses. They are not only oncolysis, not only immunotherapy, but it's the combination of these two uh, mode of action that really does the virus work. Historically, the first hint into that direction was by the group of Andre Lieber that they have, uh, weirdly, I would say, but they find that uh, uh, in a, a syngenic tumor model of breast cancer, the vector, basically first generation expressing LACZ, was basically the best one. So it was not even replicating this virus. Just for the, his presence was, in fact, enhancing the survival, increasing the survival of the animals. That's it. Of course, there is the presence of LACZ, which is very immunogenic. But still, the idea was there. The more immunogenic, the more, even without replication, the virus was working. Then there is a very interesting paper like still very early, and then when I say very early, we are talking about 2007, 2010, uh, because there was a time where people start to develop this. And if you think it's really, really weird that when I say very early, I'm talking about four years ago, five years ago. But nevertheless, it's a very elegant paper by Rebecca Van Osten and Thomas Swift from the Immunology Department of Duke University. Basically, what they did they realized for the first time that in order for, this is a first generation vector, it's not even an oncolytic <coughs> virus, but you see already here, the first paper are always about vectors, and very few paper about oncolytic viruses. So you see that one field is converging very fast, while another field is going very, very slow. But nevertheless, they realized that uh, by depleting, uh, well, CD8 and CD25, basically, you even increase the the the, uh, the, um, the efficacy of the, the um, of the virus in, in, well, in addition to CPG only, but this is a detail. But when you deplete the T cell, basically the virus works as bad as the mock or as untreated. So you need the T cell in order for the virus to work. 
very nice thing. Ignored, I think, back then. There was another very interesting approach uh, where they have cloned my DD8 this time into a first generation vector. So who knows what my DD8 is? Good, I know you all know, but I just say it so that it's hot here. So my DD8 basically converts, uh, so auto like receptor, which are pattern recognition receptor that can sense all kinds of pathogens trigger their signal through my DAD8. So they clone this my DAD8 to really exacerbate the, uh, the, the immunity of this virus. They made a bad immunogenic virus. And if that immunogenic virus works very well in uh, uh, syngenic tumor model, and what they realize that uh, it loses its uh, uh, activity in uh, when, when you de deplete, well, e either if you deplete T cell or if you deplete NK cell. And NK cell, it's even more remarkable. So now they are starting to put in not only the adaptive response, T cells are important, but also NK cells are important. So you see how the picture is like shaping already from the early time. One of the reasons why it was so difficult for the uh, uh, from, from, for the uh, oncolytic viruses field to show this is that uh, replicating viruses and especially the AD5, basically we all use human serotypes, but human serotypes do not replicate in murine tumors. So if you, want, if you want to use a human tumor, so if you want to assess replication, then basically you need to have uh, a nude mice or immunosuppressed mice with human tumor, so you have replication but then you don't have the immunosystem. So that was obviously one very tech big di uh, technical difficulty. So finally, we stumbled into these uh, uh, animals, Syrian hamsters, which are semi-permissive for ID5. So here you can assess finally the immunological response as well as the oncolysis. And when I performed this experiment was basically, I saw that obviously that the the, I have an oncolytic virus, just oncolytic, and I have an oncolytic virus armed with GMCSF, let's say a more immunogenic oncolytic virus. So very soon we go like, you know, the tumor disappears, so the virus is replicating, is doing something, right? But what we did here, and that was the first time ever that uh, it was shown that the oncolytic adenovirus can trigger a tumor-specific immune response, was to re-challenge these animals with either the same tumor on one side or a different tumor on the other side. And what we found was that uh, when you challenge the animal with the same tumor, all the animals that were cured with uh, this uh, super uh, uh, immunological virus were be rejected the, 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 the tumors. The animals that were cured with a normal virus, one out of five uh, uh, did not reject, but four rejected the tumors. And of course, animals that were naive, the tumor just to grow. But when on the other side of the animals, we put a different tumor, so a tumor the animals were naive for, this tumor just grew. And this is again the first evidence where oncolytic virus field finally met, met the, 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 the immunotherapy field. And we, could, we were able to show that, OK, if you use an oncolytic virus, you can create some degree of anti-tumor response. And this anti-tumor response can, in fact, protect, protect animals from, uh, from, from, uh, from re-challenging of the tumor. This virus was licensed to a company, Empress Therapeutic, who, that, who did some uh, 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 studies in, in, uh, uh, in human or clinical trial. And uh, this is interesting. I'm showing this not because there was a very drastic reduction in this mesothelioma patient because that was not the point and we have seen it a lot of the time with oncolytic, uh, uh, with oncolytic adenovirus. But what is interesting about this is that this lesion was actually not one of the injected lesion. Of course, not arguing anything, but I'm speculating that eventually was the anti-tumor response that actually was in fact acting on, on this. Together with adenovirus, there was also the group of Richard Weil uh, in Mayo Clinic that started with different viruses and started to, 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 to realize that, uh, well, of course, in order for VSB 
to work with another another own politic buyers, a single Stomadinis buyers, uh, in order for it to work completely, you need the intact Im uh, immune response of the animals. If there is something lacking, like in my DAD8 knockout mice, this 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 virus is actually not working. And along the same line, we also show that in, in, on the other hand, if you are able to insert CPG oligos into your backbone so that your virus like hyperstimulate to like receptor 9, you have a much better response. There was also an, a very, another very interesting approach recently published by uh, uh, Dr. Suzuki Masatake at, uh, at the Baylor College of Medicine uh, that basically shows that uh, you can use, in fact, helper dependent vector, which is very uh, which uh, high capacity, so you can clone whatever you want in it, uh, together with an oncolytic virus, and you can, in fact, use the, oncoli the oncolytic virus as a helper in vivo for the propagation of the helper dependent virus. So by, by mixing these two, instead of having one round of infection of the helper dependent virus, as it should be because it cannot replicate, because it's using the protein of the, first of the oncolytic virus, it can propagate and can have a very long uh, 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 activity. This is just some of the experiments that he, he, that he did. I think it's very original, a very nice example of how you can combine also these two vectors. But if we look now that we have seen a little bit of history, if we look at uh, how are now the, 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 the situation in clinical at the moment, we have several because it's, it was very difficult to pull up everything that is going on. But there is a lot going on now in the clinic. But I only pull up all the trials that, are, that have now specific immunological uh, uh, endpoint, where basically they are saying in the trial, we're going to check this and that. It's very interesting with Marapa virus, uh, uh, they, they, they are doing it a prime and boost with an adenovirus. I love it because you're priming with one, it's an heterologous prime and boost. So completely changed change the, the scenario in, in the last really 10 years where we were giving viruses with chemotherapy and now we're do, doing a heterologous prime and boost with two different viruses. Well, the virus, of course, a lot of measles. Vaccinia virus, herpes simplex, of course, TVEC has been just approved by FDA, and of course, a lot also adenovirus. We're a little bit fast now because this part is probably a little bit more boring, but nevertheless, I really wanted to uh, like give you the idea on how much <coughs> is going on in the clinic at the moment and how focused are uh, all these uh, 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 clinical trials on the, on the immunological part. Well, vaccine virus, we all know it's a very huge, very potent oncolytic virus. Uh, is it now in the clinic with two different approach? One vector, it's not even replicating anymore, and, uh, uh, and the vaccine virus really, really, really high, high replicating virus, and of course the, the, the oncolytic version. What I love about this approach of vectors that they've done a very potent immunogenic vectors. Uh, that uh, encodes for, for PSA and three different immunostimulatory molecules. Vaccine is huge, so you can put whatever you want in it. Uh, and they are doing the prime with one vaccine vector and the boost with a different serotype of vaccine vector. Very nice. It's been working very, very well. It's in phase three clinical trial. Uh, and I'd say by looking at the results that they've published so far, I really suggest you to to, to, to read this paper, mm -hmm. it's really outstanding and remarkable results. And it's also very interesting that they found a, 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 a small sugar on the, uh, on the envelope of the, of, the, of the virus that if the patients get immune response against it, it's predictive for the overall anti-tumor response, which basically show if you are reacting to the virus, you are reacting to the tumor. Well, of course, there is also like very interesting data on the, the on the, the double deleted vaccine oncolytic viruses. Again, this is a very beautiful trend on low dose and high dose. This is still uh, 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 on phase two and three clinical trial. Then, of course, there is the TVEC, herpes simplex one virus, highly oncolytic, attenuated. Again, in the very recent uh, reports of the data. They highlight significant lymphocyte infiltration, elevated T cell with a killer phenotype, reduction of Treg, 
and elevated to more specific uh, T cell uh, uh, response. Again, once again, we're not talking about oncolysis anymore, and none is talking about none of them is not talking. But everybody is very focused on how these platforms can really trigger the the, the anti-tumor response. Again, very beautiful data, and I think we all know that FDA has approved the TVEC for the treatment of melanoma, and this is, has been probably one of the big, biggest success in the oncolytic virus field in probably the past 10 years. And of course, my favorite, uh, adenoviruses at the end. So also with adeno, again, I think this, which was already touched by, uh, uh, by Andy before, uh, is a very, very, very beautiful story that tells you everything that I tried to tell during these lectures. So this virus was developed, first of all, this virus was developed uh, uh, by Bayern. So Big Pharma wants to develop a, an oncolytic adenovirus to start with. Very, like, uh, 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 remarkable scientists are on board, like Lensenware, like uh, 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 Andre Lieber, and so on together with people from Bayern. They developed because they want a very highly oncolytic virus. It was published on PLOS One in 2008. Uh, then, of course, the big pharma is not interested anymore, so they go aside, and this company is now took over, which are having incredible results with the, this is all the, the, the clinical trial ongoing at the moment. Uh, the evolved, the more I like this one because it's called more it's mode of action where they specifically are going to address how the virus is modulating the anti-tumor response. And it's nice because it is now focused on the immune response where at the beginning was bioselected because of its oncolysis. It's kind of a controversy, but it shows you how the paradigm has shift in this in this period. And also on their website, I hear always cite what they claim on the website. And the website is an oncolytic vaccine. So it's not oncolytic virus anymore on their website, but it's oncolytic vaccine. Also very nice data with the CG007, which is another oncolytic virus, uh, mainly used on bladder cancer, together with some surfactant to enhance the transduction. It's an anti-5 uh, virus expressing GMCSF. Uh, viruses by called Genesis, and again, it's called Oncolytic Immunotherapy Agent on their website. Then there is well, some other adenoviruses. This is an a a a RGD AD5 virus, which also was touched by Andy. It's an AD5. Uh, serotype 5 Delta 24 is the deletion that makes the virus oncolytic, and RGD4C is the motif that enhance the tumor transduction of the virus. Uh, and again, on the website, it's DMX2401 is an oncolytic immunotherapy. Similar story also with ICOVID-5, which is very nice oncolytic virus developed in Spain by the, the, uh, uh, the group of Aramo Alemani. And then there is Oncos 102, which is also a beautiful example of, uh, I think, the, all the clinical trial that Oncos have done, and, uh, uh, and I'm not biased at all here, uh, but uh, that Oncos have done have been planned already from the beginning to uh, assess the immunological aspect. And in fact, uh, if, if we read the last two oncoimmunology reports that they have done on the phase one clinical trial, it's very, very, very focused on immunology. And I just want you now to look at how potent this, this is T cell uh, increasing the tumor after the virus. I just want you to, to see how remarkable is the T cell recruiting at the tumor side, which if you think it's so obvious, obviously you have an infection and the T cell goes there, everybody would uh, have guessed, but for some reason there was some resistance at the beginning. But <coughs> look how remarkable is this and how remarkable is also this. And of course, they also have seen, uh, well, of course, infiltration of T cell uh, uh, in 11 out of 12 patients. And what I like is that they have seen increase of tumor specific T cell uh, uh, in basically almost all treated patients. So th those are the conclusion that oncolytic virus paradigm has shift. And now we like to refer to it as oncolytic immunotherapy or oncolytic vaccine. 
it's a, there is an increased new, new wave of interest. Now all the big pharma that jumped out before, now they are approaching again this, this small uh, uh, company and say, well, what should we do to, to, to get on board? I think they know how to do it. Uh, and uh, again, there are a lot of more immunological focus uh, 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 kind of uh, design uh, at the moment. What are, in my opinion, the, 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 the future direction? Well, I like the heterologous prime and boost. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the combination therapy with immunological checkpoint also makes a lot of sense if you think that on one side you are pressing the gas towards tumor immunity, but tumor specific T cell cannot do anything if the immunosuppressive environment is still very, very pronounced at the tumor side. So we need actually to press the gas on one side, but also to release the break on the other side. And uh, this is basically what my lab is mainly focused on designing more immunoprivileged platforms to, the, uh, to enhance the anti-tumor immunity. So basically, and I leave you with this provocative question, you have seen this uh, uh, a very marked T cell recruitment at the tumor site, but uh, you don't know what those T cells are against for. So are, are they antiviral T cell or anti-tumor T cell or anti-what T cell? And this is actually uh, for us to find out and also to find out how can we convert the phenotype of this T-cell from one to another. Uh, thank you very much. And those are some key uh, references that I've used for these lectures. I'm happy to take some questions. Thank you. Great talk. Thanks very much. Thanks. I have time some questions. Well, it's an education session. So much for some questions. Yeah. Yeah, very nice talk. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, what is the most promising of the? You have mentioned a lot of oncolytic adenoviral vectors. So, which one is the most promising? Are all related to the Thank you very much. This is a great question, and I didn't know it before. I invite you to my talk on Saturday and tell you what is the most promising. We share the session together. Okay, great right. session together. Great. <laughs> Terms of so so in the in a lot of them still have five base. Yes. Yes. So, so do they have to uh, ex exclude patients with pre-existing, uh, or are they? They actually. It's, yeah, it's a bit of an unknown. Yeah, they don't. I mean, I think even add five. Well, of course, the Oncos 102 is added five days. Chimera developed originally by uh, 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 uh But I think even add five works very well within the tumor context. I think when the virus is there and there is enough pressure and the virus stays on the membrane enough time. And then it goes there. It's a little bit different the tumor transduction than the you know the in vivo tumor transduction with uh, with uh, with tissue. But these are intravenous or IP injections. Always I intratumoral administration. Oh, interesting. Yes, I think call I think one is probably so the only type. Like yes, that is IV because it's it's a different serotype and then it basically it's not uh, it does not interact with a lot of. I want to. I know people who are making mouse, like you talked about the sort of lack of replication in the mouse, so I know people who are making oncolytic mouse, yes. mouse one, yes. so are they just making it replicating for human, so they can develop in a mouse, but then transit? They would be the most, like, uh, uh, I think, probably the most <coughs> intelligent way, because obviously we have thought about it all the time, we should use an oncolytic mouse, mutant version, but then if it works very well, how you... How can you translate that to clinical trial? Then you're stuck again because you have to do it all over again. So really, the field did not want to use. Uh, and it, uh, and it makes a sense. I mean, we want to cure you here. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.